let's switch over to something that I think you know a fair bit about innovation. And uh, let's talk about the uh, uh, innovation corridors and the super clusters. It was $950 million that right. was committed to, uh, to I think it was five super clusters That's across right. the country. Uh, they were named. Uh, we're very proud as the Mississauga Board of Trade to be part of the advanced manufacturing right. uh, super cluster. Uh, but one of the things that was left out, and we were wondering why, considering we have 400 life sciences companies in Mississauga and we are a hub for pharmaceutical companies. Uh, what happened to life sciences? Uh, <laughs> they didn't get a super cluster. So it's a great question. You know, it, 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 uh, it was a very competitive process. First of all, it's a new policy. It's a new way of looking at how we do public policy. And one of the, again, I want to take a step back from our perspective. Uh, what, the way we develop public policy now is it's a partnership model. Uh, as, as I said earlier, it's about creating conditions for success, but ultimately it's how do we create partnerships with businesses and how do they play a leadership role? Because they know where the growth is, you know where the opportunities are. Government's not going to pick and choose which sectors or uh, which companies are going to succeed. Really the market's going to dictate that, customers are going to dictate that. So we had a very competitive process and what we said is we're going to use our convening power to bring academia, large businesses, small businesses to come together. We're going to put some money in the game, have some skin in the game, uh, to leverage more money from the private sector, uh, to really show that this is a serious uh, policy. Uh, and this was a very, very competitive process, over 50 submissions. And ultimately we landed on five because we wanted to be strategic. We wanted to avoid the peanut butter approach. We wanted to avoid giving $950 million to 950 super clusters. Right? We just said, look, it's just not the way to be thoughtful about this uh, policy and program. The thing that people don't fully appreciate, and I'm glad you asked this question, is we think of advanced manufacturing in the lens of traditional manufacturing, or we think of artificial intelligence in the lens of traditional, well not traditional, but this new emerging technology, or oceans, or digital, or the ag supercluster that were are created. All of them, to a certain degree, have certain dimensions in the healthcare sector. So when it comes to, for example, the digital supercluster in BC, they have key partners in the health and bioscience sector. Advanced manufacturing, the technologies that are going to be developed are going to help with the manufacturing in the health and bioscience sector. Artificial intelligence is sector agnostic, right? It impacts so many different sectors, including the health and bioscience. So I would not characterize that health and bioscience and pharmaceuticals in any way were not winners in this. It's just that their value proposition is reflected differently to the super clusters.